In the previous videos, we trained up a naive Bayes classifier, and then we validated that classifier on a set of data that we had pre-labeled, but we didn't use to actually train the model. So we took a training set, we pre-labeled certain data. In our case, it was tweets, but really it could be just about anything you want to categorize. And then we trained up that model, and we took another set of pre-labeled tweets and we tested it to see how well it was doing. I'm calling that the train test approach. So I'm going to talk about three different ways that people validate their models in data science. There are many different ways. The two most common are called k-folds validation or leave one out validation and k-folds is actually the most common way. I'm going to call the way that we did in the previous videos with the naive Bayes model, I'm going to call that the train test approach. And so if you can look at this uh, green rectangle here, so that's our training data. We have 300 pre-labeled tweets and we use those pre-labeled tweets, this green rectangle, if you can just imagine that's our pre-labeled tweets that we used to train up the naive Bayes model. And then we went over to another tab and we had 20 pre-labeled tweets that we did not use to train the model and we saw how well it performed on those tweets. Now, the problem with this approach is that usually in real life, if you're going to all this trouble to pre-label certain data to classify tweets, you know, by hand, you want to use those tweets to actually train your model because right, that's more data, that's more observations to improve the accuracy of your model. So how can you actually do that? Well, there's this approach called k-folds where you, and I'm going over to another tab now, where you divide up all of your labeled data. So the advantage of k-folds is that you can actually use all of the tweets or whatever it is that you've categorized, all of them to train your model rather than just one piece. So how does this work? The way it works is, so going back to the train test approach, you're basically doing the train test approach, but you're gonna do it several different times. You're going to, right, we left this data out, right, we left one little piece of data out to test on. So we're gonna do that same thing. So right, we'll train up our model using these so we had 320 pre-labeled tweets, that's why I have these 32. We'd say we, the most common approach in k-folds is to pick 10 folds, to have 10 folds. So you divide your training data up into 10 different groups, and you should do that randomly. Randomly decide which uh, data go into which fold. And then you do just the same thing that we did before. You train up your model using every fold except for one, right? So I'm selecting these nine rows here. We're gonna train up our model with those nine folds, and then we will test to see how well it's doing on this 10th fold. And then we'll record a number to see how well it did. And then we do the same thing again, but we're gonna leave, we're gonna, now we're gonna use that fold to train up our model. So we're gonna train our model again using, say, uh, the folds two through 10, and we'll leave out the first fold and see how well it, our model does on the first fold. And then we do the same thing again. So we'll use all of the folds to train up our model, except for, say, the second fold, and see how well our model did on the second fold to test it. You can kind of see where I'm going here. Uh, we'll do the same thing again. We'll use all of the folds to train up our model, uh, and then see how well it did on that uh, third fold that we left out and we just keep iterating through that process until we have uh, used every single fold to train up our model and we've actually tested our performance of the model on each one of these folds and we log an accuracy number for each one of these folds how well it did when it wasn't used to, how well the model did on a particular fold when it, that fold was not used to train up the model so we end up actually training up our model uh, right? Uh, however many folds you have, you're going to train up your model that many times and test it that many times. And then when you're done, you will use all of the folds to train your model. And so you'll end up with 10 different numbers representing the accuracy of your model. Whoops. Then you'll end up with a few different accuracy. You'll end up with the same number of accuracy uh, metrics 
uh, or you'll, you'll end up with one accuracy metric for each fold. And so you take the average of that and that'll represent your overall accuracy and in the end you can then use every single labeled piece of data uh, to train up your model. Now I want <coughs> excuse me, I want to talk about one more type of cross-validation technique and that is the leave one out cross-validation technique. And the leave one out cross-validation technique is conceptually identical to the k-folds technique except for one thing it's a special case of k-folds and in the leave one out technique you are actually dividing up your data into however many data pre-labeled data points that you have so say we had 320 tweets we're actually going to leave just a single tweet out uh, each time and train it. So let's say we only had 10 tweets that we had labeled, but we would train up our model using these nine tweets and test our model on that tweet. Then we would do the same thing again with all of these tweets and train it to see how well it did on the second one and so on. So it's the same as k-folds, but you're actually dividing up your data a lot more. It's a lot more computationally expensive because say in this k-folds, right, we're just, we'll pick 10 folds and we only have to train up our model 10 times to do this and then an 11th time to get the final model and leave one out, right? If we have 320 tweets, we're gonna actually end up training up our model 320 times to get the accuracy metric and then one more time to build the final model. So that's cross-validation. I want you to know uh, about k-folds and I want you to know about leave one out. And I want also for you to know that k-folds doing with 10 folds is by far the most common technique that you'll see in industry and as, as well as academia. And the reason for that is because k-folds can actually be a more accurate uh, accuracy estimate for your model uh, rather than leave one out and um, that's beyond the scope of this class to go over why but you can certainly look at it by the way there are websites so I'm gonna post a link to this video below in the video description because that they talk about um, training and testing and cross-validation using slightly different terminology than I do and I think it might help you. There's also the Wikipedia page on cross-validation you might want to check out and then just so you know there's also uh, if you're getting into this and you're wanting to start using R or Python or SPSS and you want to ha and you have uh, statistics questions check out Stack Exchange cross-validated. Cross-validate is actually the name of this uh, this section of this website where you can, um, you know, get a Q&A on any type of questions you have. So that term cross-validate is actually kind of one of those catchy data science terms and people will name their company cross-validate or something like that. Um, so I will see you soon in the next video. Thank you very much.